Hey everybody, this is Mike Miller and welcome to the Strike Up the Band podcast. And today we're going to stay in the brass band world. Seems like we've done several brass band episodes in the last few weeks, but that's okay. I like brass band episodes. Uh, my guest today is Patrick Oliverio. Patrick is the principal tenor horn with the Fountain City Brass Band, which is one of the top brass bands in the U.S. and uh, one of the few American brass bands ranked in the world rankings, actually, from uh, what I saw in, online recently. And uh, he's also played with the brass band of Battle Creek. He is a uh, adjunct professor of music technology at Missouri Western State University. He plays trumpet and alto horn, uh, just has all kinds of things going on. I met Patrick sort of online on Facebook on the NABA site, I think, a few months ago. And so I uh, wanted to just talk to him and see what all he has going on. Patrick, thanks so much for taking time to be with me today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, you have a lot of things going on that we just mentioned briefly. Uh uh, before we get too deep into that, I always like to ask everybody, you know, just a little bit about their background, where they're from, and how they got their start uh, doing music. Sure. So uh, I am a, um, I guess, a military brat. My parents were uh, in the Air Force, and both of them did about 25 years in the Air Force, so I moved around a lot. I did most of my public school, you know, learning middle school through high school in Arkansas, um, that's where I started on trumpet. And then I went to the University of Arkansas for my undergraduate in trumpet performance. Then I did my master's degree in trumpet performance at uh, University of Missouri, Kansas City Conservatory. Um, tenor horn <laughs> kind of fell in my lap. I got a call one day from Lee Harrelson, who's our, our artistic director and founder of Fountain City. Uh, and, and I just asked him, how's everything going? And he said, well, not good because I'm looking for a new solo horn. And uh, without missing a beat, I kind of just said, well, I'll try it. <laughs> and his response was, are you, are you serious? <laughs> so um, I picked it up. I gave it a shot for one of our holiday concerts. And then the, the rest, as they say, is history. Um, that's kind of my primary instrument now is is tenor horn. I still do play trumpet, but I mean, I'm not as actively pursuing, you know, playing, you know, gigs and, and full time jobs doing trumpet. I, I actually really, really enjoy playing the tenor horn. And um, I actually have a few uh, projects that are coming up for the tenor horn, new compositions that I'm having commissioned. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little bit about myself. OK, Um so did you go to the to grad school with the intention of becoming a professional trumpet player and then things and then you just sort of changed your mind? Yeah, no. So <clears throat> when I went to uh, in my undergrad, I wanted to be um, a high school band director. And then uh, by the time I got out of my undergrad, I wanted to be a professional trumpet player in the symphony orchestra. And then when I went into my master's, then I wanted to be a college professor. And then I started my doctorate actually at Michigan State University with Justin Emmerich. Um, and through, you know, my doc, my doctoral studies and just the experiences that I've had. And I actually did teach adjunct, uh, adjunct trumpet at Saginaw Valley State University, which is in Michigan, the, the northern part of Michigan. Um, I kind of just realized that that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. Um, as everyone during the pandemic, we all had hit, you know, probably a wall and had some interesting things happen to us during the pandemic. And for me, it was, you know, I kind of like lost the interest in trumpet altogether. Um, I found found it really difficult and to motivate myself to practice. Um, so yeah, the whenever the opportunity to play tenor horn came up, I kind of jumped at it and you know, that that coupled with my newfound, you know, love of technology, music tech, you know, audio and video, um, it kind of was just a, a, a happy accident, I guess. <laughs> OK, yeah, I got to say, if you if you want to be an orchestral trumpet player, you really got to want to be an orchestral trumpet player, because that that <laughs> takes huge amounts of practice and preparation for, you know, even a 
you know, fairly small regional orchestra, you might have 50 guys showing up to, to audition and they can all play. Oh, hundred so. <laughs> percent. And, you know, so. having, having subbed in, you know, the Kansas city symphony, um, still, and, you know, having subbed with the Detroit symphony orchestra, I mean, it's, I, I, I understand the level that it takes to get those jobs. And I just uh, never f- could advance to a point in auditions to where I've, I've made it to the final round of an orchestral audition once. <laughs> and, you know, I thought I did the absolute best that I could. And if my best wasn't good enough to make it, then it was one of those things where it's like, well, I don't want to completely devote my entire life to just getting this one job. So, yeah, yeah, completely understandable. Plus, the uh, brass band is more fun. A lot more fun. A <laughs> lot more fun. <laughs> uh, had you, were you involved with the Fountain City Band prior to the switching to tenor horn, or had you played trumpet or cornet with them? Yeah, I've, I, uh, I joined the band in 2013 whenever me and my wife, Jen, moved to Kansas City. Um, they had an open kind of cattle call audition for cornet players and I did it and I was, I was sat on third cornet, which is in the back row last third cornet. And I've played every chair in the cornet section, except principal cornet, which I would never want to do because <laughs> my wife does that and she does it really, really well. And that's not what I do well. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was just looking through your website and I saw one of your videos was was of your wife. And so she plays uh, plays cornet slash trumpet as well too. Mm-hmm. She's she's actually the principal cornetist I've found. Okay, that's great. So uh, I guess uh, I guess you're. I, I know you have a small small child, so I guess uh, the child is uh, is probably going to end up playing cornet one of these days. Uh, he, <laughs> it's interesting. He uh, he doesn't like when we practice either tenor <laughs> horn or cornet. Um, he really loves percussion. Okay. Which is great. He loves marimba of all instruments. So I can, I can tolerate that. It's the maybe drum set. I don't want to have in my house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, had you played tenor at all before, uh, moving to the solo chair there? Not at all. I, you know, I, I, well, I, I guess I take that back. I mean, I've, I've played a couple notes on it. Yeah, that way I can kind of just see what 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 kind of mouthpiece it's it is and kind of what it feels like and all that. Um, but no, not not extensively, not even close um, to what I thought I probably should need to do to play solo. But yeah, I guess that's the whole uh, the whole brass band philosophy is that in theory people can switch between horns and not really have to relearn anything other than the size of the mouthpiece. So was did you find it fairly fairly easy or how how, how hard was it for you? No, not at all. It's really hard. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I I think you know back whenever you know brass band first emerged, uh, that was definitely a thing um, to where you know anyone could go in and sit on any chair and they could they could make it. It'd be okay. But as you know, the repertoire has gotten significantly harder, and you know pedagogy has gotten better. Um, you know, the demands of, of those, you know, corner chairs, the principal players is very high <laughs> and it's, 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 it's a very different instrument than, than trumpet. So it has the bell flare of that's about the size of a bass trombone. It's the bore size of like a large bore trumpet and then has the mouthpiece of like a very small, small bore trombone. It's just very, it's a very odd combination of <laughs> things and it's pitched in E flat. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll confess. I during the pandemic, I was I was trying to do something new, and I thought I might try to learn alto horn. I got a local music store brought in one for me to try out, and I I played it for about thirty minutes, and I was like, "Oh man, I can't play this thing." <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the The mouthpiece was just. I, I have a big fat lip, and I play a large uh, tenor trombone mouthpiece, and I, I just couldn't fit my face into it. Uh, so they, they did not get a sale on tenor horn that day. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I understand. So I, you know, I started, um, I luckily had a lot of really great people in my corner whenever I decided to actually take up the chair and, 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 and start playing tenor horn kind of full time. 
uh, you know, Owen Farr has been a huge resource for me, which if you haven't heard of Owen Farr, I mean, he's, he's the best, he's the best, in my opinion, the best um, pedagogue and player of the tenor horn alive today, in my humblest of opinions. Okay. Um, I also had the, the tutelage of David King, who's an amazing conductor and pedagogue based out of, I think, Brisbane, Australia, but also conducts Brighouse and Rastrick. Um, he was a huge help. And honestly, just having Helen and Lee uh, both there to pick their brains, especially Helen, um, really helped me a lot in the first couple months of playing the instrument. Yeah, I guess nobody starts life on tenor horn. I mean, you... Not over here. Yeah, over okay, I guess, I guess that's true. In, in the UK, that would be different, but... Uh... Yeah, at least in American band programs, it's not a it's not a standard instrument. Which I mean, if if I had my say, it would be. It is actually a really, you know, to get a really lovely sound out of it is actually pretty easy whenever, you know, you're first starting off. And it's kind of one of those instruments where it's like, you know, there are some kids that have a really great armature for maybe trumpet. Um, but it, it maybe it needs a little bit of a larger mouthpiece, but it's not too large, like a trombone that kind of fits the bill um it's actually a really successful instrument over there to start they usually start kids on cornet tenor horn and trombone and then from there they kind of branch off into the other instruments i think also they start out in baritone as well if i'm not mistaken so okay. trombone and baritone okay uh, i guess uh tell us a little bit about fountain city I've, I've heard of the band i'm not that familiar with it other than uh Having read, I know you guys have won won some NABA contests, and uh, you mentioned before you guys are getting ready to go to uh, go overseas this year. So tell us a little bit about the history of that band and uh, and the personnel in that. So, Fountain City was founded in two thousand and two by Dr. Lee Harrelson, who is the professor of low brass at uh, Missouri Western State University. Um we just celebrated our 2020 year anniversary last year um the personnel has kind of fluctuated in the past to being you know having a lot of people out of town that kind of fly in for you know our concerts or projects rehearse and then we do the concert series to now it's actually probably closer to 50 50 or even maybe 60 percent in town um we have you know people who've been playing with the band ever since it was formed we have people that you know that still f come in from louisiana oklahoma um arizona we we used to have a member that came all the way down from washington state whoa <laughs> driving mind you <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, we, uh we miss dave we we want dave to come back we we love him and miss him um but yeah, so the the personnel as you know, people come through Kansas City to do their degrees at maybe UMKC or University of Kansas. Um, you know, they come and, and play with the group a little bit and then they get hooked. And then when they go off to, you know, bigger and better things, getting jobs and things like that, they want to come back to play with the group. And that's really where that, you know, the, the project aspect of the group came was was from the you know, these members that have been playing with the group for you know three or four years when they're in their doctorate um to you know they get a job say in louisiana at louisiana state university like matt vangel who's our flugelhorn player um he's been playing with the group oh my goodness if you look on our website it shows how long very long time but um yeah that's kind of where that all came from is you know and then we have some people that, you know, are friends from the UK, friends from Australia that has that have played with us before. Um, what's on our docket for this next upcoming year, we're doing a tour of the UK. Also, we're competing in the uh, brass in concert competition in Gateshead, England. We uh, are also the band that is going to be playing the gala concert for that competition, which is kind of cool. Um, what else do we have going on? We have our brass expo for our Fountain City Youth Academy. Um, that's a big component of the Fountain City system is our Fountain City Youth Brass Academy. Um, 
pre-pandemic, we had upwards of 100 students enrolled. Um, so three full bands and then one kind of, I don't want to say kiddie band, but the, the, the fourth one was kind of a, you know, young starting players um, to now we're, we're more like one and a half bands, <laughs> but we're trying to kick that back up again now that we're out of the pandemic and we can start going back to things as normal. Um, and that's, that's a huge uh, component of the Fountain City system that we have here. Yeah, that's excellent. Do you have to fight the band directors in the fall to get their kids out of marching band? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, because okay. we don't start in the fall. We start okay. in the spring. All right. Because of that exact reason. <laughs> you know, everyone knows that, you know, October, uh, uh, October is, you know, band tober there's so many different competitions and football games and playoffs and all that stuff that goes on it's just it's not feasible for us to have the youth academy really start up in you know full capacity um in the fall so that's why yeah our our, our full fountain city uh, academy starts up in january uh usually so okay so with uh, with people coming from as far as they do, do you kind of tend to schedule rehearsals in, in blocks versus like once a week or something? So this this year, we're actually moving back to uh, a weekly schedule, which is great, um, especially for us in town folk. Uh, we'll, we have weekly rehearsals. Um, but yeah, usually when we have uh, a lot of people coming in from out of town, we'll have three to four rehearsals and then the shows anywhere between two, two to four shows. Battle Creek, Brass Band of Battle Creek. It was, uh, you played with them just recently. Was this, was that your first time playing with Battle Creek or? No, that's actually my second time playing with them. And okay. the best of my knowledge, I'll be playing with them moving forward. So, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. I've, I've seen some of the videos. I know that's like an all-star band with people from all over the country. Uh, some of the best brass players in the world. It's a great group of people. Um, so I was, you know, kind of uh, fell into that group. Uh, again, Owen Farr, we can thank him for that. He had a last minute, uh, not cancellation, but someone, someone couldn't make the performance from the UK. And he knew that I was in Michigan at the time and asked if I could make it. Um, I played the concert, went really, really well. And then I just played on this last concert. And then I was told moving forward, I'll be playing with them from here on out. That group is interesting because we have, you know, people like Owen Farr and, and uh, Marshall Gilks on trombone, who, if you haven't heard him. He's, yeah, I'm familiar with Marshall. <laughs> he's, he's, he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, you know, Stephen Mead on euphonium and Gail, I mean, just you go down the rows and, and it's an incredible group of musicians. Um, it is not a competitive brass band. It's really there for the concert series for the concerts that they give. And then also the educational aspect that they have. Um, not to say they don't play hard repertoire. They do. We just played actually a piece, um, called extreme makeover, which is a, championship section test piece uh and that's a very difficult piece <laughs> so um but yeah no like this this last concert we just played was you know uh, new orleans style jazz and we had you know wycliffe gordon come out and play and solo were incredible and then doreen kitchens um amazing clarinetist um the last concert i played before that was an all john williams concert which was also really cool Got to play a lot of really the cool horn licks on tenor horn, which is different. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, the, that band, where, how did that band come about? I mean, obviously it's, it takes a huge amount of money to bring in all these people and keep them there for three or four days and pay them and, and feed them and, you know, put them in hotels and everything. Uh, is there a foundation or something that, uh, that, 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 uh, funds that organization yeah so i know that one of the main um contributors to the brass band of battle creek is the kellogg foundation uh you know kellogg cereal brand is a major major uh corporation that's headquartered i believe in battle creek michigan i believe so yeah uh, 
So that's that's certainly a big one. They also have a, a an amazing team um, behind Bass Brand, Brass Band of Battle Creek uh, board uh, um, a board that does amazing work for fundraising, grant writing, and and they have a huge patron base that comes out to every concert. I mean, it's they they completely pack the Kellogg Auditorium every concert, which is which is kind of cool. And that group's been around since mm, I want to say eighty nine. Okay, eighty nine or ninety. So, so it's been it's it's got it's got a couple of years under its belt, and and they they're doing they're doing really great things. Yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously, I've uh, I've had a chance to meet uh, Wycliffe. Wycliffe, Wycliffe. Yeah. yeah, I he played with uh, our trombone choir down in charleston at spoleto like mm. i don't know it's been 15 years ago or something like that and i've i've had a chance to see him in concert a couple of times since then he's he's from not too far from my neck of the woods down in augusta georgia oh, it's about mm-hmm. two hours from me he's so, a good he's a good guy great guy a monster player but oh yeah really great guy and that's the one thing i do i i really actually enjoy about battle creek i mean the music making is great but it's the that kind of camaraderie of all the players. It's it's just it's a really really good hang. Like the people there are amazing. Not only the players, but also the the folk in Battle Creek, Michigan. It's it's a really it's great. It's a great time. How 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 many days of rehearsal do you do for a concert? So we get there. Um, so we have our Thursday rehearsals, then we have our Friday rehearsals, but we also have a, a children's concert that morning. And then Saturday is the concert. So basically kind of two days of rehearsals and then the show. Okay. Yeah. With players like that, you don't need too much rehearsal, but <laughs> it's all. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Good thing. Those guys don't go to Nava because nobody else would ever win. So <laughs> it's 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 a it's it's interesting because it's just a different it's a different type of playing like you know the you know other than the the test pieces that we play the i mean it's a lot of jazz it's a lot of pop it's a lot of movie music so um yeah it's it's different it's it's kind of a w- interesting thing playing with fountain city you know being a competitive group like my hometown group um very 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 high level playing i I don't want to put bands against each other because you can't. But I mean, the level of playing in Fountain City is just as good as the level of playing in Battle Creek. Okay, it's just uh, different. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. Uh, okay, so you also mentioned uh, just before we started that you uh, you have a CD or solo project you're working on. Yeah, so I actually uh, commissioned new works for tenor horn and piano. Uh, from Tom Devoren, uh, Lucy Pankhurst, Joel Collier, um, Dorothy Gates, and Andrea Hobson. Um, the CD is, gonna, is called Equinox. It should be released here in October. I'll be doing the recordings here later this month. Um, yeah, no, it, it should be an amazing CD, I think. If I'm, if I'm not speaking out of turn, I think I'm the first american tenor horn to ever release a cd <laughs> so there's that <laughs> but the one thing that is kind of the weird thing you know going coming from trumpet to tenor horn you know with trumpet there is a just an abundance of repertoire to play whether it's you know method books or or etude books or solos unaccompanied piano with orchestra wind ensemble with tenor horn not so much um so it's either it feels i feel like the the choice of literature is play a piece that is a transcription from either cornet or something else or play a piece that has been written specifically for owen and owen is an amazing player and if you just look up any of his videos you'll see why that sometimes isn't um approachable <laughs> he 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 is uh he, some of the the works that he's done arrangements he's done is the haydn uh, cello concerto he plays that on tenor horn he plays the mendelssohn violin concerto on tenor horn um he does the paganini caprice 
on tenor horn uh so i wanted to get some pieces that are a little bit more approachable and things that you know any player any tenor horn player in the united states could pick up and play um so it's a lot of still you know virtuosic writing but it's not nearly as <laughs> crazy as some pieces that have been written for the tenor horn okay um or so i know you do your own audio and so forth or where, where are you recording this so i'm actually going to be recording um in the i can't remember what the name of the hall is but it's at the university of kansas uh ku um they're they're really beautiful recital hall and, I, and i'll be collaborating with ellen summer uh who is their staff accompanist there at um uh ku okay well we look forward to hearing that um uh, and i know the other thing that that you were i mentioned that you're into and i uh have seen some of your work online is the uh, video and audio technology uh and I know that's what you're teaching at school how, how did you get into that <laughs> well i've always kind of been in, in, interested in in tech as a kid uh you know building my own pcs and and just being into that side of things um uh, it's always been a passion of mine but the pandemic was kind of the big um spur and the opportunity really for me to you know dive head first into it at all the time in the world um i still had my lesson students so i still had kind of a revenue stream which is nice so i was able to get some new toys and and i had opportunities to help some of my friends do some really cool things um you know uh doing multi-track videos then i helped fountain city do a lot of their projects the the distance banding is what what it's called the, basically it's the virtual ensemble videos um and that's really kind of where this whole thing started i just i'm self-taught i never went to school for this um i had a music technology class in my undergrad that was very out of date <laughs> even back then <laughs> so all the stuff that i learned is things that i i've you know either picked up online through various resources or things that i've learned from other audio engineers and videographers and video editors yeah and I, i'm into that same sort of thing maybe not quite as deeply as you are but uh there is a lot of information out there to learn a lot. on your own there are, <laughs> you can you can spend years watching youtube videos on how to shoot video <laughs> <laughs> and too I many think, videos on how to shoot video too I, I think there's like an entire industry of, of people doing camera reviews on on youtube <laughs> i mean uh i guess they they get enough of that uh what's the affiliate money or whatever so um but uh i noticed on your uh like on your website you've done work for oh what well, let's see You've got uh, the Marine Band up here as one of your clients. Mm -hmm. Tell me, so how'd they, that come about? So my my friend through Fountain City, uh, Chris Larios, reached out to me. They were doing um, kind of their version of distance banding. Um, you know, they they had little smaller groups put together some chamber works, and his quartet through the Marine Band was putting together a, an arrangement of Melody Shop and he knew nothing about video editing and or audio editing so he reached out to the one person that did and that was me <laughs> so you know they they did all the recording in their homes and i took put it all together spliced it all together and delivered it to the, the president's own marine band okay. for them to air on their youtube and their facebook page and so yeah okay cool cool <laughs> Uh, and I th you, also, you saw the video for the Nava competition, I believe, uh, a month or so ago. Was that? Did, did you do that? That that was me. Okay, that one video was like twelve hours long. Was... <laughs> that, the live stream, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I was the one that did all of that, and that was an adventure to say the least. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, how, how big an SD card did you have for that thing? uh i had no sd or did you card. record to a, a hard drive i guess okay external heart a six terabyte external hard drive 
Okay. Yeah. I watched parts of that. I, I don't, I don't have the patience to watch all 12 hours, but I, <laughs> I did watch. I don't blame you. <laughs> to watch a, a fair amount of it. Okay. Um, let's see. That's about a half hour. Uh, any other projects, anything else you have going on you'd like to tell the world about? No, no. Uh, honestly, that's <laughs> uh, not not much going on right now. The summer is, well, this is actually the first summer that me and my wife have kind of had to just relax, which is awesome. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's usually, you know, us going from conference to conference to conference to conference. Um, but, you know, I International Trumpet Guild's already over, and we're not going to any of the other ones, so we're just relaxing at home. <laughs> which is awesome (laughs) does she teach trumpet as well or she does so she is the uh associate professor of trumpet at missouri western where i teach as well okay um before that she was the professor at uh oakland university in michigan okay how big a school is that missouri western it's about i want to say it's forty five five thousand students not too big not too small not too big yeah it's a good size that's a good size. Okay. All right. Well, uh, hey, Patrick, thanks so much for taking time to speak with me today. And oh, I appreciate it, Mike. We look forward to, to seeing your CD come out. Uh, or I don't know if anybody actually does CDs anymore, but your your <laughs> your project, your recording project. I will project. have physical CDs. Okay. <laughs> it's, okay. It, I, know that, I know that that's going the way of the dodo, but still, I will have physical CDs, but I'll also do the digital I know. Oh, I know, you know. Right, you know, somebody comes to a concert and they want to go away with something. A CD is still a good way to do it. They make great drink coasters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you, Mike.